In this video of C Sharp Basics, we're going to take a look at numeric types. Numeric types come in three basic forms. They come in integral numbers, floating point or decimal numbers, or bullion. Let's take a look at integral numbers first. We can see on the left hand column we have a type. Now the type is the actual declaration word that you need to use to declare what type of number it is you're going to have. The range indicates the different values that you can assign to that type. The size column indicates how much memory is occupied by that type. Here we have the S byte, and the S byte allows us to put any number between negative 128 to a positive 127, and it takes 8 bits. 8 bits is equal to 1 byte. Here we have just a regular byte, and a byte can be any number between 0 and 255. The char type allows us to use any one of the Unicode 16-bit characters. The short data type allows us to store any number between negative 32,768 to positive 32,767 and is stored as two bytes or 16 bits. The U short data type allows us to use any number between 0 to positive 65,535. The U short and the short data types are very similar in that they occupy the same amount of memory. The difference is, with the U short, you can only store a positive number, whereas with a short, you can store a negative integer. The int data type, or better known as integer, can store any number from negative 2,147,483,648 to a positive 2,147,483,647. I've highlighted int in blue here because int is the default data type for any whole number between those values. So if you simply typed 1, it would default to being an integer. The uint data type occupies the same amount of memory as the int data type, that's 32 bits, but it only stores whole numbers that are a positive value from 0 to 4,294,967,295. Here we have the long data type, and you can see that it occupies 64 bits of memory. Clearly, this range is too far for my little brain to figure out on how to pronounce it, but you can see that the long can hold a lot of numbers, just so long as they're whole numbers. Here we have the ulong data type, and we can see that it occupies the same amount of memory as the long, except it only accepts positive numbers. The only reason I can think of to use the ulong is to calculate our national debt. Now let's talk about floating point and decimal numbers. The float data type allows you to actually put a decimal point in your values. You can see under the precision that we're allowed to have seven digits after the decimal point. Next we have the double data type. And the double data type is the default value for any number that has a decimal point in it. With the double data type, we're allowed to have anywhere from 15 to 16 digits after the decimal point. If you're really, really going for some accuracy on that decimal point, you're going to need to use the decimal data type. The decimal data type allows you to have anywhere from 28 to 29 digits after the decimal point. This can range based upon how many numbers are in front of the decimal point. The Boolean data type is often not thought of as a numeric type, but in fact it is. This is because it occupies only one single bit of memory. The Boolean type, or bool, can only be assigned a value of true or false, but one bit of memory is really only a one or a zero, and that's why a true or false value is a Boolean. 